Hudderne adding machine. This hundred year old counting engine. And this machine from a modern office are all counting tools. We call these machines computers. How do computers work? And how do they help us in our everyday lives? Since the beginning of history, man has shown his need to count things. At first, he probably counted on his fingers. But man soon found that other counting tools could help him count more rapidly and accurately. One of the earliest counting machines was the abacus. Some of these kinds of computers are still in use in many parts of the world. But as world population grew, and life became more complex, the need for more efficient tools increased. 300 years ago, man turned to mechanical devices to help him count. These new mechanical computers depended upon gears, levers, and weights to perform the counting operations. They were slow, noisy, and only slightly more dependable than man himself. More than 100 years ago, Charles Babbage designed a computer that could add, subtract, multiply, divide, and store information. But because the machinists of his day were not skilled enough to produce the parts he needed, this machine was never really completed. Nevertheless, Babbage's machine was the forerunner of our modern digital computers. Today's computers use electronic circuits in place of the old mechanical systems. Inside this little plastic box is a miniature electronic circuit. Electronic circuits are far more reliable than gears and levers, have no moving parts, work at very high speeds, and can store great quantities of information needed to keep the records of our rapidly changing society. All computers have five basic parts. An input unit that receives information. A storage or memory unit. An arithmetic unit that does the computing. An output unit that delivers information. And a control unit. Computers need two kinds of input. Instructions to perform certain operations in a certain order, and information needed to carry out the instructions. The input information can enter the computer in several ways. It can be on punched cards. or the input can be on magnetic tapes or magnetic disks. Information can also be given directly to the computer by typewriter or by drawing diagrams with a special pen the computer converts information from all of these inputs into a form with which it can work. Electrical pulses. Bits of information pass from the input unit in the form of electrical pulses to the storage unit. 
There, each bit of information has its place on a memory core. These cores are smaller than pinheads, and the storage unit of a large computer may have millions of them. In the arithmetic unit, computations are carried out. Computers can perform all the counting operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and comparison of numbers. These lights tell us that computations are being done in the arithmetic unit. Information is brought from the storage unit. Arithmetic operations performed and the results are then returned to storage. Computers can deliver information or output in several ways. This high-speed printer changes the computer's calculations in electrical pulses back into a form which we can read. Or the output may be printed by a computer-operated typewriter. Or appear on a screen, like a television screen. The control unit directs the operation of the other four units so that every step is performed at the right time. We usually count with a system based on 10. But because computers are electronic, they use a system based on the two electrical conditions, on and off. We call this a binary number system. We can demonstrate this system by switching lights on and off. Here the lights are counting from 1 to 15. With enough lights, any number could be shown. Computers work so fast, they can handle inputs from many different people at the same time. This is called time sharing. As far as these operators are concerned, each one has the computer to himself. But actually, the computer rotates its attention among them, giving each a small fraction of every second. Time sharing makes computers useful for many more people than would otherwise be possible. Computers may be part of a school program. These high school students are learning to use their classroom computer. Every day, new uses are found for computers. Large-scale industrial processes, such as chemical manufacturing, use computers to control production. Air traffic controllers depend on computers to accurately schedule flights. And it is computers that have made our entire space program possible. Back on Earth, computers help prepare the bills that come to your home. They help keep records of charge accounts, memberships in organizations, and bank accounts. Computers are becoming more and more widely used. 
If you look around, you'll see many ways that computers are affecting your daily life. 